What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Preview Podcast. Um, for those who are watching on YouTube, i got a beanie on right now. I'm trying to grow my hair. You've never seen me in a beanie. I swear I'm not robbing a bank right now. So go easy on me in the comments. You guys have, uh, you know, always show me love and support. So thank you so much. But um, I'm growing my hair out. You're going to see lots of hats and beanies. For those who are listening uh, on Spotify and Apple, you don't understand what I'm saying right now, and that's cool too. It's probably for the best. So anyway, let's get into footy chat. Um, this week, we've got another special guest, uh, Damo, who does a super coach podcast, who's a massive Fremantle fan, um, is about to jump on the podcast. So I'm going to drop that interview in right after this. Other than that, normal stuff. We're going to react to the team lineup. I have not seen this team lineup yet, uh, and I'm really, really excited. And then we've got some news and some other stuff to talk about. So... Let's jump in straight to the interview with Damo uh, now, and then we're going to do the reaction and talk about all that stuff. So very, very fun. Here's Damo. Welcome back to the Further North podcast, everybody. And once again, second preview podcast in, and we've got, uh, from what I've heard on the streets, the biggest Frio fan to ever exist, Damo. Uh, Damo, thank you for joining me and uh, ready to talk some Fremantle Dockers. Thanks for letting me uh, infiltrate the opposition. Uh, it's uh... <laughs> It's a bit different to, to be on a club specific podcast, but uh, hey, it's glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Do you want to tell everyone listening where they can uh, find you? I've heard you're a bit of a super coach guy. Yeah, yeah. So most people will know me for my super coach stuff. I'm uh, the co host of a podcast called The Footy Mailbag with uh, Clarky. Um, we sit down once a week and give you advice on your super coach teams kind of blindly because we can't actually see your super coach team, but <laughs> we try and help. Unreal. Unreal. For all you super coach nuffies out there, that's the place to go. I, I super coach the weird one for me. You know what gets me about super coach and not just super coach in general, but about, you know, on the Thursdays when they post the lineups for the games that uh, are coming out, they don't put the players in the right spots. Like they'll put Harry Sheasel at center half back. And I'm like, that's, that's wrong. And it really frustrates me. And I know it means nothing whatsoever, um, but it really, really gets to me. And, you know, when I can't just put Nick Larkey and another key forward who gets four touches and kicks three goals as my forward combination, I can't make a structured team in super coach. It gets to me, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've learned to just ignore the team sheets and just as long as that player is playing, then that's good enough. Yeah, no, totally right. As long as they're on the park. Um, I'll apologize in advance to everyone who's watching. My light that was in front of me has just died because I stupidly forgot to uh, to charge it. So apologies for that. But hey, you're just here to listen to our voices anyway. We'll kick it off then. Um, big game this weekend, a blockbuster at Marvel Stadium. Uh, North Melbourne v Frio. Get your tickets quick, guys, because... They're going to be limited. Now, um, let's talk about Frio's last result. i tell you what, I was very impressed with how they played. I watched three quarters of the game. I missed the first quarter, but I watched the uh, the last three. Incredibly impressive stuff. How would you, uh, how would you sum that up? Um, well, people have been talking about their speed and them wanting to use the ball quicker out of half back and whether they were going to actually do that. And I think they played the tempo game really, really well. And it was something that probably lacked last season. And so seeing them want to move the ball quicker against Brisbane where they probably had to was really good. Whereas last season, they really tried to slow the game down. They really weren't willing to go when they had to. And it was really good to see them use the speed, control the tempo and get themselves to a good position to, to win. And it was uh, that second quarter was absolutely outstanding. And then, mm. In the forward line, everyone wondered how it was going to work with no Lockie Schultz at ground level. Well, they seemed to cover that pretty well because they had Michael Walters, uh, Luke Jackson, Jai Amos, Josh Tracy, Michael, like goal kickers all across the park, basically. Yeah. No, for sure. And look, I won't I won't pretend to know every single Fremantle docker. We don't get heaps of, you know, uh, interstate sort of footy news over here, but Jai Amos, uh, is that it? Amos or Amis? Which, which one is it? Uh, Jai Amos. Amos, he looked very, very good. I think last year, muscled out of a couple of contests and, and needed to sort of grow into it a little bit, but he was very impressive up in the forward line. And I guess that was one area where I've always found Luke Jackson, his good is very good, but he he can be a little bit like a classic Ruckman and can be clumsy at some point. But now having those two um, targets up there, obviously you're missing Sean Darcy and that'll force Jackson to ruck a bit more. But I don't know, they're looking like a pretty decent duo going forward. 
Yeah, for sure. Right? Like Josh Tracy, Jai Amos up forward with Jackson in as well as may- maybe a third who can also move up the ground a bit. It's created a nice uh, tall trio for them. And uh, while Sean Darcy's out, there's a bit of structure change and a bit of personnel change, but that that happens in football. Inj- injuries happen. You have to cover it mm. some, somehow. And that just shows how, you know, the, the versatility of those three guys being able to play different roles when they're required. So what do you think it was? What what? How did you guys sort of play against the Lions to sort of undo them? What what sort of game plan? Has anything changed in the in the preseason? Because for us, obviously, North Ball was talked about. I don't know how much it was over in the West there, but um, look, we we love North Ball and we're trying to play this incredibly run and gun style. We saw that against the Giants, where we put up as many points as the Pies did against the Giants, which I think is a great result, and obviously kicked very accurately, but going the other way, we can, we're a sieve basically everything just goes straight through the guts, one, two, three passes. And then they're, they're having another shot at goal. Um, what's yeah. changed for the Dockers from last year to this year? What was the main thing coming out of Freo? I think, I, I think last year. So in 2022, when uh, the Dockers reached the semifinal, I think, I think they overperformed in a way for what was expected and no one expected them to sort of make the finals. Justin Longmuir's second year or third, third year in charge. They were still sort of developing the list, but made finals and everyone thought, Oh great. This is a great launching pad. And then didn't go there again in 2023. And there were only a few wins out of the eight, even though they did finish what 14th or 15th or whatever it was. Mm. And, and it feels like, what what they did well in 2022 and then what they did well towards the back end of 2023 has just sort of meshed together in this first game against Brisbane. And now we're seeing a culmination of both years coming together. And Justin Longmuir's grand plan is now, is now coming to fruition with all these players that he's now gotten. Mm. I mean, we lost Brennan Cox and Oscar McDonald on the weekend to injury, but he seems supremely confident in who we've got to replace them. So I'm, I'm very, I'm going to watch that very closely and, um, and who knows what it's going to look like at team selection. But I think the team is set up really well to have a pretty solid year. Yeah. I was going to ask you about the injuries. Was it just the two from the game you got? Uh, Carl Warner's out with concussion, but he was fine after the game. He was, he was chatting. He'll, he'll, he'll have the protocols that he goes through, but um, it was just Oscar McDonald who they still haven't confirmed whether it's an ACL or not. So I, I'm wondering if it might not be, but uh, Brennan Cox out for 12 to 15 weeks with a hamstring strain. Jeez, injury. 12. That's a massive hamstring strain. Yeah. It sounds like, it sounds like they're hoping he can come back after the Dockers buy in round 13, which would mean it's exactly 12 weeks. So 12 to 15. So 15 being like the worst case scenario, but I mean, Brandon Cox, he's, he's was one of the fittest players at the club before this injury. And mm. so ho- hopefully he continues his, that sort of uh, work ethic and can get back pretty, um, pr- pretty quickly. So let's uh, flip it up a little bit here. What did you think of North Melbourne on the weekend? Did you catch any of it? Did you hear anything about it? How are you feeling about them at the moment from a different uh, fan perspective? I mean, truthfully, I was out when this game was being played, but I was watching the score tick over. I was tracking my super coach players. I was looking at that and asking questions how they were playing. And they got within five points at half time or close to half time. And then the giants sort of just put their foot down and then it was, and, and it was their game from there. But the fact that North Melbourne got so close just shows how much this team is growing and how much Alistair Clarkson's game plan is sort of, being used, you know, by these players and being learned by these players and bright future for North Melbourne, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I I would agree with that. And I think a lot of North Melbourne fans at the moment, like we sort of talked about a bit before, um, we're not expecting fireworks this year. We're expecting a step and the bigger step it is, the happier we are, but it's a step in a three, four plus year plan that we can see coming together. And, you know, as North Melbourne fans, we've sort of seen the massive change the club's had in the last 12 months. Um, I understand the rest of the world hasn't seen that yet and I don't expect them to, but one day we're really hoping mate, cause it's, it's been a tough five years, but Hey, here we are. So, um, who are some players for North Melbourne that you'd maybe be looking out for with the game coming up on the weekend? Is there anyone you rate or you think could cause you some issues? 
Well, I mentioned Oscar McDonald and Ale- and uh, Brennan Cox going down with injuries. So the whole defense set up for us and I, and well, if, I don't really want to talk about last year's game, but I will. <laughs> Big- Happy to hear about that one, Matt. It's one of our only <laughs> three wins. Um, so I hope that we don't let, your forward line get off to the same start that we allowed last year that we had to fight back from and then ultimately didn't get the win from. So hopefully Alex Pierce can continue his good start. Hopefully Luke Ryan, Ethan Hughes, those sorts of players can play on your forwards and really lock them down because Zerha, Larky, um, even your new, your new recruits, they like Dylan Stevens and all that. Mm. Those sorts of players who who can burst through packs, who can jump over everyone, and just you know make make defenses change w- within a minute. Mm. I just hope that the Dockers have planned for covering these injuries as well as they're sa- as well, as well as they're telling the media basically. And um, and I think and I, and I think it'll be really really cool to see how your midfield with Wardlaw and uh, all those players in, 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 in there stack up against the Dockers midfield as well, as, as well with the new setups. Yeah. I was impressed with the Dockers midfield. I mean, I guess that's, uh, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll segue into the next bit uh, with that, with, um, you know, obviously players that we're looking at for each team, you know, LDU and Powell and Wardlaw in the middle did pretty well. And that that's that's the place where I think we can take advantage of, t- of lesser midfields than the Giants, arguably the best midfield, definitely one of in the in the comp. Uh, it's interesting you talk about the, the forward line there. Like Dersma added so much for us in his first game with his marking ability. And I think he's going to be a pretty decent set shot at goal. P- Paul Curtis is another one that... Ford pressure really looks good this year so far. And he's dynamic. He's either going to be the best or the worst player on the park, arguably sometimes. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how you guys can cover that. Um, I rate Alex Pierce very, very highly. I'm a fellow Tasmanian. So it's, um, you know, always good to see what he can do down there. And he's a good matchup for Larky. It was interesting with Larky last week because Sam Taylor, obviously being probably the best defender in the league, Larky still got, three goals if i'm not mistaken three two or three it's one or the other but yeah it'll be very very interesting you guys are missing uh jager amira as well um do you know how uh, what's wrong with him i i didn't even know he was out of the team until i saw saw the game uh, it's just knee soreness at the moment that they're reporting but i think he was on the outer anyway i think really? the way yeah. that they've i think the way that they've set the team up there's probably not much room for him, but I mean, they've got Brandon Walker coming back from his um, patella tendon injury. Uh, Carl Warner's now out with uh, his concussion. He's now in protocols with that. Uh, Corey Wagner, who you guys would know well as uh, as well, <laughs> uh, he uh, he's out with a calf injury. So do we use Jager O'Meara across halfback? Do we try and see if he can bring his toughness up against someone like a Cam Zerha in sort of like a negative sort of role there in, in our defense? Like a run but, with role or something just to put him yeah, off? Yeah. 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 yeah so, so, something like that. But yeah, I, I just don't, I don't know where he fits based on what I saw against Brisbane on the weekend. He mm. doesn't really have the speed. He doesn't really have the disposal efficiency to to allow Fremantle to continue on the same trajectory as they were against Brisbane with the fast uh, movement out of the stoppages with the with using the wings the using the width of the ground and all that so um if he does come back it, I don't know what role he will have and um that's probably a big watch how how would you rate your your midfield? Um, as in, I think last week for North we we've got some class in our midfield, but I think apart from Wardlaw, it lacks a lot of physicality and and toughness. Um, you know, Sarong clearly had an immaculate game. Like the dude was racking up possessions for fun. Um, obviously, Fife did he play a lot of midfield minutes last week? Is he back in the midfield or is he playing more forward? What did you see from him? It looked like he was in for most of the center bounces and then would sort of float forward. And mm. then most of his work was done forward of center. So um, he looks like he's found a role for himself in his later years that works for him and not just being a forward that didn't work or a midfielder where his body 
probably can't stand the rigors of, you know, the, 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 the crash at the moment. And, um, yeah, but I mean, Fife in there with the young Brayshaw, um, mm. even Sam Switkowski sends, spends time through there. Uh, like we've got options that can go through there and, um, I know Bailey Banfield can go in there. I, I know Michael Frederick can go through there. Um, Luke Jackson, when he plays in the, in the ruck, is almost like another midfielder once the ball hits the ground. And so I, th- I think I think our midfield might not stack up against the best midfields in the competition, but it's something different that the opposition has to sort of plan for. Yeah, because, you know, leading on from sort of what I was getting at before, I think our midfield is our strongest part of the ground, but it does lack a bit of physicality. And I'm wondering, and I'm sort of hoping, is that somewhere where we can try and exploit Fremantle, even though they're very clean ball users, you know, is the physicality there in your midfield? Do you think? Cause you know, the, the giants midfield are just all brutes. You know what I mean? Canelio yeah. and um, green, obviously in there, you know, do you think that physically your midfield can sort of match it? Or do you think that's a, that's a weaker point for you? Uh, Hayden Young will tackle for days. Brayshaw mm. will tackle for days. Um, when Sarong's not getting the ball, he will tackle whoever has the ball. I think I think the physicality in the midfield got really exposed um, early last season, especially against against games against uh, Western Bulldogs and Brisbane in two consecutive weeks. So changes were were made to give us a bit of grunt through there and. Well, will and will Brody is still still around as someone who can come into the team and potentially add something. So, like I said, there's a big watch on how they cover the injuries to all those players in de, in in defense. Does does Hayden Young go 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 back to defense and does a Will Brody come in? And I and I think however they cover it, they will want someone who can bring the same brute force that Hayden Young is bringing through the midfield now that he's in there. Uh, and so. I think, I think, I don't think it's something that you guys can exploit, but I think it's something that there's definitely planning for. Mm. If there is a weakness to the Dockers and something that we could exploit, where do you think it might be? Well, talls. If 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 you guys name another key forward or something, then then we might have to put, you know, a, a Luke Ryan on a Nick Larky and that, I don't know how that's going to go, but mm. I mean, Luke Ryan has held Tom Hawkins goalless in the, in the, in the past. So there's every chance that he can do it again to, to someone else, but uh, it's, it's, it's hard until like, until team selection, it just, ha- just, mm. I'm worried about what you guys might exploit now that we've got all these injuries in defense. Yeah. And what's an area that you think you could exploit us in? If you were going to look at us um, and where you're good, how do you think you can get at us on the weekend? I think like our defense is a little under undermanned. I think your defense coming into the season is a little undermanned with obviously Griffin Logues recovering from his ACL. You've got some players missing. Um, Goat has just gone down with his Achilles mm. injury. I think our forward line can exploit your defense as much as your forward line can exploit our defense. So I think how the ball is won in the middle and how the ball is used in the middle is going to be really, really um, is going to decide the margin of this game and, 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 and how much either team wins or loses by. That's a really good point to make actually, because that's kind of how I feel as well. I think, you know, whoever wins the midfield battle in this game, I think is going to maybe take it. I mean, look, it's, it's a game that I feel like North Melbourne can win. I'm definitely less confident after seeing how well the Dockers played on the weekend. But, you know, we were coming up against arguably the premiership favourites, uh, I'd say probably at this moment, so even though it's early on. So I'm not sure. I, I definitely feel like we, we can win this game. We're underdogs, and I think obviously most games we are going to be. But, yeah, you're totally right. Like that midfield battle is going to be so crucial. And I was pretty disappointed with the lack of physicality and toughness of our midfield last weekend. When we got the ball, we were pretty – we, we handled it pretty well and we were pretty smooth with the ball. But the lack of physicality and getting beaten up going the other way, I don't know if we can stop that. So we might – see a very end-to-end you know relatively high scoring game do you reckon yeah and i mean Fremantle weren't very clean with their ball use at stages there was lots of fumbles lots of lots of um d- double handling with with the football where they probably could be should have been cleaner could have been cleaner and i think if north melbourne are 
really bring a, a high pressure game, then they won't have the opportunities to clean up their ball use the same way that Brisbane were kind of allowing them to, to, to do so. And I don't think Brisbane were allowing them to do so in, ter- in, in, in a way that um, they thought would, would prove detrimental to the game. I think it's just the way that Chris Fagan structures the team that they're, oh, they're stuffing up the ball. We got to move in that direction. They've they've taken time now. Now they don't have an option up foot, up 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 ahead of them. So, mm. um, I just think I think if North Melbourne bring a pressure game as well, it might not necessarily be through um like crashing or banging or tackling, but a pressure game, um, yeah. could could possibly um expl- exploit Fremantle. So let's uh, let's tip the game then. How do you think it's going to go? Um. I'm going to go Fremantle, surprise. Uh, wow. But <laughs> but <laughs> I think I think it will be. I don't think it will. I don't think it will be a blowout. I, th- I think it will be a with. I think it will be within three goals. Mm. So I'll say. So I'll say seventeen points. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna look. It's gonna be one of the one of the few this year. I'm gonna back north. I just think this is if we're gonna win any games in the first four weeks of the year, it has to be this one. Um, and I, I'll tip us by like, I'm talking five points, a, a goal, a goal max. Um, if we can get up in this one, yeah, it'll be a goal or, or under a goal. I, do, I haven't seen my team win con- comfortably for a while. I've, I guess the Gold Coast last year, but the last time we played, obviously it was, uh, was it out of bounds? Was it not out of bounds? That was the question, uh, after round two yeah. last year. So. And, and, and I don't trust Freo in close games. So, so well, I don't if, trust if, mine so in if, close games either, mate. So, <laughs> so if, 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 uh, if, if North keep it close, then I'll be scared. Mm. Wow, we well. Um, look, I, I'm really hoping we can get the chocolates because we're we're playing uh, we're playing GWS, Brisbane, and Carlton in our other uh, three games of the opening month, which is pretty rough so, for, for us. Yeah, Freo, um, Freo have uh, Adelaide in Perth, and then Carlton in Adelaide, and then Port Adelaide in Adelaide after this mm. game. So, I'm not confident for either of those Adelaide games, Carlton and Port Adelaide. So. Uh, I'd mm. love for them to be to, to be three zero head, heading into gather round, but I know Frio, and that's yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> is the Adelaide game in in Frio? Sorry, it's in Perth. Yeah, it's at, okay. It's at Adelaide, the stadium. Adelaide weren't very impressive to me on the weekend. I, you know, not. I'm not saying it's a definite, obviously, but I don't know. You should have some confidence going into that one. Should have some confidence. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Well, uh, how many wins do you reckon you'll get this year? Where, where, where are you projecting? Just of your opinion, where do you think the Dockers end up, and what's your sort of goal you've got for them? Uh, I don't know how many wins this is, but I've, I've, I've sort of said it all preseason that I see Fremantle being one of those teams that is in the conversation for those those positions between sixth and tenth towards mm-hmm. the point towards the back end of the season. Like them, like they need this team to do this. They need to win this, 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 and this. So is that 12, 13, 14 wins? I'm not sure, but that's kind of what I'm thinking for, for Frio this, this year. Okay. Interesting. So if you say you finished like, you know, ninth, 10th, I'd say you'd think that's a successful sort of season compared to, to last year, or do you expect finals? <laughs> It would it, it it would depend on the losses. If 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 like we had lots of close games and there was a healthy percentage, but we we'd had just one too many or two too many losses in that column, then then it might be okay. But if if if, if we get to, to mid season and the players are spent and they're losing games by 60, 70 points, then no, it's not been a good season. Mm. Okay. No, fair enough. One more question uh, before we before we wrap it up because we've got through this pretty quickly. Um, nothing to do with North Melbourne and Fremantle. Did you see the announcement of the Tassie team? Yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 I did. What are your uh, thoughts on the logo and the uh, and the Guernsey? Um, I kind of boring, but like it's expect like, but it's 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 Tasmania. Like that's that's what they've used for their. Um, for their state team, that's what they've used for a long time. So it makes sense that it's now been adopted to be the AFL, um, to be the AFL, um, to, to be the AFL colours and and design. So 
I think it will have, I think it will get tweaked and changed um, once they're in the competition and once they establish themselves, but oh man, and it's really exciting for the Tassie people and there's something to be said about getting in on the ground floor of an of a brand new AFL team and we saw people jump onto Gold Coast and the Giants when they came in and I think I saw them all re- already up to 40,000 inaugural members and I think it only costs what $15 to to, to be to be an inaugural member before they've even entered the competition so they've got the support they've got the support and I think pending what happens in the state election this weekend um <laughs> They've, they're going to enter the competition with with some real strong fan base. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, I, I lived in Tassie for twenty years, and and a lot of my my family's all down there, and my my friends are down there, and you know that that state's deserved a footy team for a long, long time. They're they're football mad. That's the only sport that matters down there. Look, basketball's doing very well now. The Jack Jumpers are there, and obviously we're seeing Melbourne, Tasmania in the in the NBL finals, but. You know, they're, they're footy mad down there. The, th- the one question I had for them was maybe everyone I know down there has already got a team. And as an example, e- even as a North Melbourne fan who's had to watch a lot of rubbish over the last few years, I still wouldn't convert my team um, because I've put, you know, 25 years of, of support into them. Um, I wonder how big the crowds will be fine because there's n- really not much else to do down there. Um, but yeah, I think it can be a real hostile place to go. I, I hope the election goes the way of, you know, being able to build the stadium and all that sort of stuff, because I think it'd be an amazing thing for the state as for the logo and the, and the Guernsey for, for my opinion quickly. Um, I don't really, I know it's the Tasmanian, uh, like the, the Jersey is the traditional one. I don't, I don't love it. I think it's a little bit like design. It looks a little bit like it's designed on publisher, um, and for your first, you know, Guernsey in, in the AFL, I would have liked a little bit more spice. I like a I plain, clean Guernsey, but it's a little bit, it just contrasts a bit too much with the green, then the yellow Tasmanian silhouette. And then the T is a bit corny for me. I like the logo. I think the logo is cool. Um, and I'm on board with that, but I don't know. I would have liked a little bit more cleanness and less cheesiness from the Guernsey. Yeah, I mean the the one thing that stands out for me is they've chose is they've gone with green, which there's not which I don't think there's any other club with green in there. I know Freo had green early on, but they've kind of ditched it Moved now away from that. To, to to just go purple and white. Mm. So seeing another green team in the competition, we don't have many teams. In fact, I don't think we've got any teams that, ha- that have green. So in their have green at least in their logos now so i mean port adelaide a teal but teal, i would yeah. uh, but uh, i just i this forest green i think i think i think it's a good uh i, I think it's a good color and um and i know it's got moving away from afl entirely but their colors are almost the same as the green bay packers now and mm. i'm a massive green bay packers fan with the with the golden green so um yeah, excited to see that in the competition because they did because this this colorway that they've got wasn't really in the competition before. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. My one pet peeve is with the color. I I just want the green to be a bit more, a bit darker, a little bit more of like a red tinge to it. Like so, it's okay. there's a there's I don't know if you know, but there's Bogues uh, draft down there, the beer, and it's just uh, like a slightly more darker, dirtier green, and I would have really liked to maybe be on the sort of more burgundy side of the green or the brown side than maybe the the blue side of the green, if you know what I mean. So look, it's a very minor complaint, but hey, um, it is what it is and we don't, uh, I can't change it. I'm not the CEO of the AFL at this stage. So look, good on Tassie for getting a team, but um, get me to design your stuff next time, guys. Come on, give us a call. I'm right here. Um, another side note, I'm a big 49ers fan. So um Go Green Bay, but uh, you know we we sort of got it done. <laughs> Just uh, interception at the wrong moment in that last mm-hmm. game, but no one expected the 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 Packers to even get into the playoffs with Jordan Love under center for the, for the first time ever. So, well, the Absolutely. first time as a starter. So, all up from here, I guess, for the Packers. I guess so. And hopefully the, the Niners are back at it again next year, but I don't know if I can sit through another Super Bowl like that, mate. I went to the Sporting Globe in a place <laughs> called Churnside Park and uh, 
wow, we uh, some uh, some Kansas fans are walking up asking if I was okay in overtime. That's how bad I was doing. So I, don't, I can't go through that again. <laughs> uh, tough, t- tough game, especially. 49ers admitting that they didn't know the overtime rules. <laughs> did anyone though? Probably not. No, no, I don't think anyone did. They, they, I they, had they, to they Google cha- them. <laughs> they change it so many times. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's hard to keep up. Mm. Well, uh, that's all the questions I've got for you, mate. We've uh, we've done this neatly and tidily, and uh, thank you very much for for coming on. And look, good luck to the Dockers on the weekend, but uh, not enough to quite get the win. I hope. Who knows? Who 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 knows? I've got my fingers crossed, but uh, I, I said to you before we started, I've got a soft spot for North. So if they win, I'll be I'll I'll be happy for the progress. Mm, yeah, no, the Dockers. I don't think anyone hates the Dockers. I think. You know, uh, the Dockers have a have a place in my heart a little bit just because of those disgustingly beautiful uh, Guernseys that you used to have with the green and the red and everything. And I just I did describe it really quickly before we finish. I did describe uh, the Guernsey to someone as the pug of AFL Guernseys. It's not it's not nice because it's cute. It's nice because it's nostalgic. And um, you know, like a pug, it's not cute because it's pretty. It's cute because it's kind of ugly, and you feel sorry for it. So, that's my closest analogy I can have. Um, but I, 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 I hope they do that in like retro round or something. If they've got that this year, I think they're every uh, there's three blocks of teams every year that that rotate um, for for retro round. But I don't mind seeing that big dirty anchor on the front of a Guernsey. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I, I want the anchor to to come back, and I know they've tried to bring it back several times, but I don't think they can get it to look uh, to, to look professional enough anymore. Why don't they just do it all purple with the white anchor? Have they tried that? Yeah, they did a few years ago. It looked awful. Mm, okay. I guess now I'm picturing in my head, it probably looks more like a training top or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, look, I'll let you go. Thank you again for, for coming on. Check out the Supercoach podcast. Do you want to shout out uh, the podcast one more time so everyone can find it and uh, get all the Supercoach tips? Uh, we're, we're called the Footy Mailbag, at Footy Mailbag on most social medias. Uh, we've got a link tree pinned to the top of most of our profiles with our podcast feed for you to follow. But on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcasts, uh, we should be there. Unbelievable. Thank you for joining me, mate. And look, uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll reconvene after the game and uh, share some friendly banter. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you very much to Damo once again for coming on and giving me all that insight uh, on Frio. I really love this where we're getting people from other, you know, other supporters from other teams on who do podcasts or in the space as well. It's good to collab um, and to get a little bit of insight on teams I don't know too much about. So hopefully you guys are enjoying that too. Anyway, Let's get to what we're all here for. Let's get the lineup. Um, I'm just going to get this up here. Now, we'll talk about this after, but apparently all the teams got gastro. Everyone's pooing their pants. Um, what does it say here? Instead of training this morning, Charlie Common, Cooper Harvey, Jackson Archer, George Wardlaw, and Callum Common Jones are expected to complete a session this afternoon. Just a precaution, but not ideal. Uh, two days out from round one um, because gastro has been sweeping the club. Not great. Um, you know what? Everyone apart from Wardlaw and Matt and Chom, we could. I I really want to see Chom back in this week. So, okay, let's just get to the lineup, and then I'm going to tell you what I wanted instead. Um, I think that's probably the best way to do it. Here we go. Only two ins and two outs. Interesting. Interesting. McDonald and Simkin in. Shields and Goder, of course, out. Hmm. Interesting. I really wanted Chom back in this week. Um, let's talk about Toby Pink for a second. I went pretty hard on Toby Pink in the last podcast, and not because I wanted him to get I wanted him to get dropped or anything like that. Um, I really just wanted him. I want Charlie Combin in this team, and I think Charlie's got a lot more potential than Pink. Pink got bullied a little bit. I was a little bit harsh on him. I understand, but I don't think my view was wrong. It's probably just harsh because it's his first game. I would have really wanted to see Charlie Common back in this team. Luke McDonald, I think that's a pretty standard in. It was either going to be him or Bergman for me to replace Goda. They're natural sort of changes. Great to see Jai back. Um, and Liam Shields going out, probably fair enough. I mean, he looked his age when he came on uh, the field. Last game, uh, great to see Simkin back and McDonald. Our two captains are coming back. In for Frio. 
Uh, Matt Taberner, Joshua Draper, Brandon Walker, and Jaeger O'Meara. Um, look, I don't know how good Jaeger O'Meara still is, but he's a name I know, so I don't like that he's coming back. Um, Matt Taberner back. I, I, I've heard it once again. I don't know much about Freo, guys, so I apologize. I know some people like to roast me in the comments for my lack of knowledge, but hey, um, you know what I'm like and you're here listening, so that's your problem. Um, yeah, I don't really know the ins very well, um, but Oscar McDonald, Brennan Cox, uh, Neil Erasmus, and Carl Warner out from last week. So, yeah. Who, let's have a look and see who I wanted in. Probably not as many changes as I would have wanted. Um, but I guess it's good to see Wardlaw still in there. CCJ has obviously, you know, got his, uh, kept his spot, which I know some people won't be too happy with. Um, but look, he needs to perform. He's got, he's probably got a month, I'd say. He's probably got four weeks of footy to show us that he can play football. Um, but yeah, good to see Wardlaw still in there, but... Wouldn't surprise me if he's a late emergency. Speaking of emergencies, Blake Drury, no, um, no Bergman been dropped from the emergencies. No uh, Phoenix Spicer, God. Um, who's our other small forward now? Robert Hansen Jr. He is not on the emergencies. Liam Shields dropped down. So look, say Wardlaw is out, I'd assume Drury uh, or Shields would come in. Hugh Greenwood on the emergencies, I wanted him in. Let's talk about some ins and outs that I had. Um, this is what I wanted and I'm trying to keep it realistic and not just dropping heaps of people because we, look, I can tell that, you know, Clarko's not dropping five, six players after round one. These are the changes I wanted. Uh, I wanted McDonald in. Um, I like Bergman, but I think we need experience. I wanted Combin in. Uh, I wanted Greenwood in and I wanted Simkin in. I wanted Goda, Pink, Tucker and Shields to go out. Obviously, Goda with the injury, Pink... He's going to get his chances. I just would rather Combin in that position. Core is experience. We can't go in with Combin, Pink, and Dawson. Like, I know people have been calling for that, but have a think about it, guys. Like, we can't go in with that little experience. So, Core and McDonald have to be there. Um, I want to Greenwood in for Tucker. Uh, the biggest thing I think we were missing last week in the midfield, we had no grunt, we had no toughness. Wardlaw brings that, but LDU just didn't last week, and I expect a massive bounce back from him. Stats looked okay if you didn't listen. If you didn't listen to the last podcast, I basically said on paper, uh, LDU looked great, but in reality, like offensively fantastic, and he's a star, and, he, and I love LDU, but... Hard nut stuff, in and under, tackling pressure, jumping for loose balls. He's just a bit soft. Greenwood would have been great in that midfield, so I'm, I'm disappointed he's not in because Tucker did nothing, so I would have swapped them. Um, Shields for Simkin was the other one. So I got right, go to McDonald uh, and Shields, Simkin swaps. Would have liked to see Pink for Combin and Greenwood uh, and Tucker swapped. I did have here CCJ for Will Phillips. I just think we need the height, and I know CCJ wasn't good. Um, he's got about a month of footy, I reckon. And then, you know, Sellers kicked six in the uh, intra-club game and uh, Greenwood has been performing well in the twos. So they're going to get their chance at some point this year. But hey, that is what it is. But they would have been my changes. Um, other than that, yeah, can we can we do it against Frio? Obviously, I did tip um, Fremantle. Oh, Fremantle. Did tip North against Fremantle this week when I was talking to Damo. Um it depends how much this gastro affects us. It's, we're not going to know until the day. We're not going to know till tomorrow. Uh, sorry, f- uh, Saturday. I keep thinking it's Friday for some reason. Um, yeah, it's currently nearly 9 p.m. on a Thursday when I'm recording this. And yeah, I guess we're going to see on Saturday morning if Wardlaw and CCJ and all those guys play. Um, Wardlaw is the only one that I think we really need out of those bunch that have gastro. And I'd, yeah, hopefully Greenwood and not Shields would come in for him, but Wardlaw's a star. I need Wardlaw in that team. You guys know how I feel about George Wardlaw. Anyway, yeah, not a, look, I didn't think there was going to be many changes. I would have liked a couple more, as I said, but hey, we move on. Uh, no point whinging, to be honest with you. Let's have a look at some other things that have been going on before we finish up the podcast. One thing I want to talk about, we need justice for North Melbourne closer to a flag. Now... For those guys who 
uh, don't follow them for some reason. They got their page taken down. Uh, I don't know if it's officially gone. They're fighting to get it back and it might come back. Uh, but their page basically got deactivated. They got zucked. They got zucked hard. Um, I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> to do with the Rivers Rise video, but hey, who knows? If you guys do not follow, they made a backup um, Facebook page, Bay 29, North Closer to Flag, or something along those lines. You'll find it. Um, and get on their Instagram for all their Bay 29 stuff. So Bay 29 is happening on Saturday. It is sold out already though. So for those who are going, I will see you in there. I will be there, um, which is incredibly exciting. But please, if anyone can help these guys in any way, contact them and see if we can get their page back. They did so much work building this stuff up. They're a massive reason why I have the platform I have now early on. So justice for flag and uh, yeah, Zuckerberg can't win this one, guys. Another point here, um, please Get to the game. Get to this game if you're in Victoria. Um, we've seen the articles floating around that they're already worried about crowd numbers. Now, do I fully believe this? Not really. I mean, it's Grand Prix weekend. You've picked the most struggling team in Melbourne against the team that is the furthest away from Melbourne. Um, put them at an awful time slot right when the Grand Prix is on. And they're going to write articles and they're going to try and tear us down. Don't listen to it, guys. It's getting to me a little bit. I'm trying to push it back as much as I can. Get to the game. This is also the perfect game where thousands of people are going to buy general admission tickets on the day. So who cares if crowd numbers are looking low uh, beforehand? You know, most of the time when I went to see North before I had the pod and went to close to a flag, uh, Bay 29, that sort of stuff, I would just buy general admission too. So look... Get down to the games you can. I sniff a win this week. I really, really do. And if I sniff a win, I'm the negative one, remember? So if I think we can win, surely you guys think we can win. Let's get down there. Let's cheer them on and let's get them the win. Tom Powell is apparently going to sign a two-year extension, which is incredibly good for the club. Um, well done on Tom Powell. Uh, played really well. I think at the start of last year, performed really well, but then did drop away and didn't maybe have the year I wanted him to. Um, pre-season, maybe didn't shine in pre-season like he did. I, th I think he did the year before. The year before, I remember him being so athletic. But that game against the Giants was really, really solid. Didn't blow me out of the water, but he was really solid, and I hope he just can continue that. He's going to get his opportunities in the guts this year. And I really like what I'm seeing from Tom Powell. So good to see him signing a contract. Not confirmed yet, but there's strong reports. So really happy to see Powley uh, get that extension. It's an interesting fight with Powell, Lazaro and Phillips, isn't it? Phillips clearly seems to be losing that battle, but I just have a gut feeling he's out of favour for some reason. Um, to not even get a chance, not even be an emergency this week again, it's not looking good for Will Phillips. Uh, I don't have any inside info on it. Um, I'll get my super sleuths sleuthing. I don't have any super sleuth. But um, yeah, I'd really like to know what's going on. I'd like to hear, hear a journalist ask about Phillips because I really don't know what's going on there. But hey, if Paul and Lazaro can step up, maybe it's okay. Other than that, guys, um, let's tip. Let's tip the week, actually. Uh, how did I do last week? I have no idea. Round two, how on the AFL website do I get back to round one? I tipped the Blues against Richmond. I got that right. I tipped, uh, did I? I think I tipped the Pies, so I got that wrong. Tipped the Bombers, tipped the Giants. I tipped the Cats. Uh, I didn't tip the Suns. I'm still not giving the Suns the credit yet. They've played some average teams, so we'll wait and see. They've got another gimme game against the Dogs up in bloody Ballarat on the weekend apparently. So they'll win that one and everyone's going to be hyped. Um, D's dogs, I, I tipped the dogs. So fair play. I got that one wrong. Obviously the uh, power one against the Eagles and the biggest surprise of all, the Dockers against the Lions. And that, you know, once again, I was sniffing a win. I'm still sniffing a win this weekend, but yeah, the Dockers looked really, really good last week. So I hope they don't turn up in, uh, in Melbourne this coming Saturday because I want to win. Now, Let's tip this week. Uh, what do we got right now? Uh, Pies, Saints, half time. Um, the Pies should carry this one out. I did see Mason Wood went off 
um, on a stretcher in a neck brace. So hopefully he's okay. Former shin boner Mason Wood, everyone's favourite Mason Wood. Hopefully he's okay. Uh, but I think the Piles will ride this one out. Um, Crows, Cats. Uh, cats win that one for me. I still don't fully think the Crows are as good as people think they are. They're once again the team every year that we go, they're going to do it and they never quite do. Um, so I'm going to tip the Cats there. Could go either way though. I'm tipping North. North by five points. That's my tip. Hawks, Ds. Uh, Ds win that one at the G. Swans beat the Bombers. Swans destroy the Bombers in Sydney. Suns, Dogs. Well, look, I think the Suns win. I think they do. But only because I don't think the Dogs are much cracked, to be honest. Um, Power beat the Tigers, I think, at the G. But that could go either way. But Port should win if they're... They think they're serious, but hey, we know that they they like to bottle it everywhere they go, like Tottenham. Um, and the Giants and the Eagles, yuck. The Giants should absolutely destroy the Eagles in that game. So they're my tips for the week. Um, I think that's kind of it for the preview podcast, guys. Short and sweet. Um, who am I going to put under the microscope this week? Who am I going to put under the microscope? I think... I. Th- I th- Toby Pink's mean, and I did see CJ last week. Let me have a look at the team lineup again. Sorry, this is I haven't got it right in front of me. I'm on the AFL website and I'm clicking through all the different things. Who am I going to put? I want to I want to try and mix it up. Simkin, Powell, Ford, Fisher, okay. Zach Fisher. Zach Fisher's under the microscope this week. Now, oh, and Darcy Tucker, not good enough from Tuck. There's a few Dylan Stevens as well. I don't think they were good enough. I'm putting Zach Fisher because I think he's going to be a star for us. And um, this is a game he can take advantage of, I think. I want to see a massive bounce back from Zach Fisher. Wasn't bad, but um, definitely wasn't. It was probably the poorest game we've seen him play, obviously. You know, their practice games, I understand that. But he looked fantastic in the preseason and didn't quite live up to it in round one. I fully expect him to bounce back and be great for us, um, but I want to see it this weekend. So I'm putting Zach Fisher under the microscope. Honourable mentions, Tucker and Stevens. Darcy Tucker, I just don't see it with Darcy Tucker. From his early preseason form of he's going to be the next bloody Gary Ablett to, um, I don't know, the last practice game and how he played against uh, the Giants last week. I don't know. I just don't expect much from him every week. Um, I can't believe a Greenwood isn't playing over Tucker or a Phillips or something like that. Um, Dylan Stevens, my guy, Dylan Stevens. I love Dylan Stevens. I'm, I think he's going to be great for us as well. Um, slightly underwhelming debut like Fisher. Wasn't bad, but I just wanted him around the ball a bit more. So, look, I think Tucker is probably the one I'm most critical of, but I'm putting Zach Fisher under the microscope this week because I want to see a massive Zach Fisher game. So we can revisit that. Jeez, I feel like I'm. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm not being mean to players. Here I am getting worried. Look, I want everyone to be good. Let's. You know what? Let's talk. Speaking of, I don't want to be mean to players. Tristan Jerry, man. Like, I'm so happy so far. And look, knock on wood. But I'm so happy. I'm the leader of the helmet Jerry bandwagon here. Um, Sherry did an interview this morning as well and confirmed that the helmet is staying on, which means he's going to be great the rest of his career. Um, I want a dominant Jerry game uh, up against Luke Jackson, who's a tough opponent. But um, you know he should muscle Luke Jackson out of everything. You know if our midfield doesn't be able to, isn't um, getting the taps from Jerry, is not putting in positions for our midfield to get the ball. I worry because Luke Jackson will be able to turn into a bit of a fourth midfielder in that area, and Jerry's not going to be able to do that. But if he can use his strength and give us first use, I fully back it. I want to see more contested marking from Jerry. He took a few last week, and I liked it. Let's keep it going because if he can be good, our team dynamic changes. I'm excited to watch Dersmer again. I'm excited to watch McKercher again. Bailey Scott, I don't want to see you off halfback, my friend. I know he's named at halfback right now. I don't like that. I don't like that. Stop playing him there. Um, I'm excited for a lot of things this weekend. And I'm really sniffing a win, guys. I'm, I've been in a weird headspace the last few days. Just, I'm really excited for this game, but I'm really nervous if we don't win. How I think my brain will panic a bit. Do I think we need to panic? No, we don't. But I... You know why? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've said this before, but it's kind of embarrassing. I haven't seen us win a game live since 2018. That is insane. Um, I've gone to heaps of games. It legitimately just hasn't lined up. 
it really hasn't lined up with the working hours I do on the weekends, living in Tassie for a long time, um, David Noble era really not wanting to go very much, and um, even just a lack of mates who follow North before I met the close to a flag guys and Marnie and all these legends. You know, it never lined up, and I want to break that hoodoo. I'm, I'm going to go to as many games as I can this year. Um, I took a few hours of work off so I, to make sure I could get down to the stadium. I can't do that all the time, but hey, I thought I sniff a win here. Do it for me, boys, please. I need this win this week. Um, it sucks that Chom's not playing too because he owes us a kanga, kanga, kanga after a win, but we're going to have to wait um, until later in the year for that. Anyway, that's enough from me. Let's keep it short and sweet. Um, I'll talk to you guys uh, on what day will it be? I think it's going to be out either Sunday. No, I think Monday morning the podcast will be out. Um with my busy schedule, that is the quickest I can get it out for you guys. So Monday morning, we'll have the podcast. Marnie's going to be back, of course, everyone's favorite, Marnie Cohen. And um, we'll dissect the game. We'll break it down. And uh, hopefully we're talking about a massive North Melbourne win. So, all right, that's it. I'll talk to you then, guys. Have a good one. Get down to the game if you can. And if North Melbourne are listening, I want you to eat a lot of bread and cheese to block yourself up um, to get rid of that gastro. Just get through the game, then you can go and poo your pants later. Please. Uh, we need you, George Wardmore, on that field. All right, I'm done. See you guys.